Cymdwch yn fawr gyfeillion. Dwi mor falch i fod yma heddi fel y Geis Iddo Blaid a gyfer y, y sir hon. Fel ydych chi gyd yn gwybod am fel ydych chi wedi clywed cymaint dros y gynadledd, mae ceredigion yn lleu arbennig iawn. Yn yr wrthgoed i Wales Cynta, a gafodd i gyhoeddi i gan mynydd yn ôl. Nes i sgwennu am Aberystwyth, as a town firmly rooted in all aspects of Welsh culture, it's possibly the most enjoyable and relaxed place to gain the best insight into the nation's psyche. Ah, uh, sorry, Caerdydd, ond mae dal yn wir. <laughs> yndi, yndi. Dwi wedi disglifio rad elfa yma fel y balast Cymru hefyd. Rhwles sy'n rhoi cydernid a chryfder i'r genedl. A rocer o llewinol yr wlad, ond yn edrych allan ar y byd, fel a ddangoswyd gan Gardys fel Henry Richard o Dragaron, Sylfaenydd yr Undeb Hedd rhwng gwladol, y ffotograffydd enwog Ron Davies o Abereiron sy wedi dangos Cymru i'r byd a'r byd i Gymru. Neu Cranogwen, Sarah Jane Rees o Langranog, Moror a Thrylith, Cedores, Prifadd ac Athrawes, dynes ymhell o flaen i hoes. Mae cerdigion yn gartref diwylliant, of course, o'r Llyfrgell Gynadlaethol i Bentre Sally Malley, uh, David Ad Gwilym i Niall Griffiths, Canol Bwynt Cynghanedd yn arbennig mewn tai fair, mae sy'r, a lle oedd yr Esteddfod Cyntaf yn gastell abicteifi dros nadolig 1176. Mi fydda i mor falch i cynrochioli sy'r yma yn San Stefan, a dwi'n benderfynol i wneud o. In her speech yesterday, Leanne called me the George Borrow of the 21st century. Thanks, mate. <laughs> or thanks, I think. Uh, I've always loved Borrow's Wild Wales with its vivid evocation of a country on the cusp of being opened up by the railways. But I didn't know all that much about the man himself. So I turned, as we always do these days, to Wikipedia. And Wikipedia told me that Borrow was said to be a man of striking appearance and deeply original character. So far, so good. <laughs> uh, it continued, although he failed to find critical acclaim in his lifetime. <laughs> modern reviewers often praise his eccentric and cheerful style. Right. <laughs> and of Wild Wales, Wikipedia simply says, his voice is distinctive and at times a little overbearing. <laughs> like I said, thanks, Leanne. I think. I can see a point though. As with George Borrow and, and many other folk on the other side of the border, Wales has long fascinated and inspired me. Growing up in Kidderminster, the blue remembered hills of the borderlands loomed on my western horizon, a uh, not so far away land of which I knew little. And quite literally, despite being able to see Wales on a clear day from my classroom window, we were never taught anything about our next door neighbours. I can't imagine for a moment that any of you who grew up in Wales did so with a comparable ignorance about England. That said, in some ways, this served me well. I've had to come and explore Wales for myself, read up on its history and culture, learn its language, fall gradually in love with it. My books and my broadcasting have given me a kind of license to be nosy. Yep, nosy Parker, it does fit. <laughs> Although I have to say, you don't have to have much of a license to be nosy around here. <laughs> and 20 years of all that traveling, talking, reading, and learning about Wales has taught me one thing above all else, and that's that no Westminster government of any political persuasion is ever going to look out for us. We will always, always be an adjunct or an afterthought. Policies designed for the overheated southeast of England are never going to succeed here. And that is why I came to Plaid. And that is why many more will do so if we can get our message out to them. Since becoming a candidate, I've had many people, too many people in truth, sidle quietly up to me, wish me well, and say that they wish they too could get involved with Plaid more, but that they can't because doing so would put their job security or their income or their grants or subsidies on the line. It has become a rather depressing chorus. We all know 
very many people in all kinds of positions of influence in Wales, in their communities or in their professions, who broadly sympathise with us, but who dare not say so publicly. And they're not being overly cautious or paranoid, as I know all too well. Earlier this year, I was commissioned by BBC Radio Wales to write and present a series on the English in Wales. When I stood for the Ceredigion nomination, I asked the BBC if this might present a problem. No, I was firmly told. Same again when I won the nomination in June. I told the Beeb immediately and was reassured that my work as a writer and broadcaster of over 20 years spoke for itself. And they were looking forward to the series and planning even to make it the centrepiece of a mini season in the run-up to the Scottish re referendum, looking at the sort of changing tectonic plates of the UK. So, I travelled around Wales, interviewing people from Welsh learners to estate agents, smallholders to academics. It was fascinating. People opened up in the most thrilling of ways. And I was proud that the sometimes thorny topics of identity and belonging were being teased out in such accessible, warm and honest contributions. That was June and July. And then on the 1st of August, my producer received an email saying, there were problems, and regrettably, they could no longer continue with the series. They got cold feet and had referred the matter up to the big boss in London. He'd stopped it, I was told. Big, bad London, boo. Well, I contacted him and was firmly told that the decision had been taken in Cardiff. I spoke to the executive producer at Radio Wales. It was, he repeatedly told me, all about perception. Perception by others, perception particularly by other political parties that Plyde and the BBC could be seen to be too close and they would love to exploit that. Remember the date that they panicked and pulled the plug? The 1st of August. Ring any bells? It was, of course, the very day of the Ernest Mon by-election, which has seen a stream of bad-tempered grumbles from the Labour Party in particular about how a former BBC political journalist had become our superb and supremely victorious candidate. Fear of the Red Tories creating another synthetic storm in a teacup was enough to put the kibosh on my series. <laughs> well, you can see the point, can't you? I mean, we must keep party politics out of the BBC. Just ask Owen Smith, Shadow Welsh Secretary, Labour MP for Pontypridd, former BBC producer of political programmes, or Chris Bryant, Labour MP for Rhondda, former head of European Affairs at the BBC, or his assembly stable mate, Leighton Andrews, the former head of public affairs at the BBC. And don't worry, Leighton, you'll be able to go back to your job very soon at the Beeb. <laughs> so I do know what we're up against and how the corrosive culture of unspoken retribution can scare folk off from nailing their colours to our mast of a free, sustainable, and progressive Wales. It's easy to pick off one person at a time, block their careers, or sideline their applications with a quiet word in the right ears. But it's not so easy to pick people off en masse. Which is why my message here today is clear. If you share our ambitions, please come out of the unionist closet. Join us, engage with our debates, our dreams, and our fledgling national democracy. And don't put it off, for the time is now. There is a perfect storm threatening to break. The debates raging in Scotland, Catalonia and other stateless nations, the continuing ructions in the Eurozone, the crisis in global capitalism and the spiteful neocon agenda that hides behind the fig leaf of austerity. But most of all, growing realisation that when it comes to things destined to be of most value in the 21st century, a beautiful landscape, an equable climate, space, clean air, clean water, renewable energy resources, resourcefulness, rootedness, culture, in all these things, Wales is rich. Although it saddens me greatly that you'll never hear those amazing people that I interviewed for that BBC series, I am so grateful to have had the opportunity of meeting and listening to them. For the most part, they were incredible. People from England and elsewhere whose relocation to Wales had opened up new doors and new horizons and who play their part in their communities with gusto. They were voices, experiences and attitudes that need to be heard. So 
that's the other constituency of the Welsh population that I particularly want to address today. My many fellow incomers here who have found a deep sense of home here in Wales. As I wrote in my book, Neighbours from Hell, to live here successfully is to commit oneself to this fierce and fantastic little country and to remember that it is a different country. There are so many that already do that and even more who would love to, given half the chance. My great literary heroine, Jan Morris, talked at the time that she was upbraided by an archdruid of the Eisteddfod for always writing about the Welsh as they and them. She'd been in Llanastymdby for 15 years or more by then, and it was time, said the archdruid, that she started writing about the Welsh as we and us. This simple, small leap, said Jan, was enough, was something that revolutionised both her writing and indeed her outlook. A line I've heard Jan Morris use often is that Wales is a very kind country, and, and so it is, to anyone who wants to play their part, to listen and to learn, to share their skills and enthusiasms, it offers untold rewards. To my fellow incomers, I say simply, get stuck in. It's us, not them. The vast majority of people that I've met know that this venal Tory Lib Dem government is counter to everything that they believe in and everything this area has always stood for. They hate the drip drip demonization of the public sector and all who work in it. They loathe the mean mindedness of the go home vans and the bedroom tax. They know that flogging off the Royal Mail will be a disaster for rural communities and they despair that the so-called recovery is based yet again solely on lighting the blue touch paper of a house price explosion, something that threatens the very fabric of rural Wales. We will hold them to account. The Tory Bulldogs and their Lib Dem lapdogs alike. Dwi'n siŵr bod chi wedi mwynhau eich amser yma yng Heredigion. Mae hi'n yn bron yn anhosyd i beidio o gwneud. A dwi'n gobeithio bod chi'n Dod yn ôl cyn hir, er mwyn helpu ni yn yr ymgeich i adennill y sedd yma yn San Stefan. Gyda chymorth ci, mae yn hollol bosib, a gyda etholiad pwysig, iawn, iawn, i'r cynulliad y flwyddyn wedyn, hanfodl yw e, ymlaen i'r ymgeich. Diolch yn fawr.